Lisa 8, you see it. We have a new <laughs> background um, photo with uh, from Berlin, but that's not the biggest uh, <laughs> feature, I guess, we have here. Um, uh, nevertheless, we have here our standard modules. We have here the project management where you can select the intersection, the cards, that, and the separation in the basic modules of the configuration, the planning, the uploading, the counting, and the support are still here in Lisa 8. What we did, we improved a lot of um, basic uh, functions, and this all gives a cool new um, item. We also put new CITS um, features in our Lisa 8. So let's start with the basic data. What did we do here? So um, here you see uh, Lisa 8, our site plan and which is now new is you have here like a, uh, a task uh, list a task menu and what is now possible here in lisa is first of all in basic data the graphical detectors so here you see the graphical detectors i can move them i can uh, move them here i can extend them you see all the time here on the left side in the properties, you see the distance to stop line here in this property table. Um, this is possible for detectors for vehicles, but it's also possible to depict these detectors for, um, for uh, pedestrian crossings. And the question is now for what you need that. For one point is you export that for, um, for Lisa, uh, for the Wisim setup, you can export them graphically in the Wisim setup. It's also possible to export the detectors um, to the map export, where the detector positions are not based in the map itself, but we have an extension. It's called NoMap XML. In this NoMap XML, you have the position in the, uh, of the detectors in a, a georeference scaled. Um, intersection. So first point, graphical detectors. The next point you can see it here next to the pedestrian crossings are um, the sidewalk and bikeways. You can easily add them. It's a new um, object in Lisa. Um, this has nothing to do with uh, traffic um, planning or more traffic safety planning. It's more a feature for also the, the map export to um, locate vehicles or then also pedestrians, uh, bicyclists on a lane. And this lane here, it has the attribute of a sidewalk or a bikeway. And you al can allocate them here on this lane and it's um, you can use it for control. You see that here, um, on the pedestrian crossings, I will also draw a new pedestrian crossing here. On the end of these pedestrian crossings, you have this lane. And for the map export, use this as a lane and the whole um, pedestrian crossing is a connection between these two lanes. Um, the next point is we have a signal groups, um, directional use of the signal groups for pedestrian crossings. So here, for instance, you see um, a pedestrian crossing. This pedestrian crossing has two signal groups and we see here on the left side P11 and P12 for both directions. Now it's possible in Lisa to allocate the signal groups to the direction. So you click just here on an arrow and you have here only P11 a signal group on the other side here, other direction you use P12. Um, signal group for this direction going to the um, to the island here. So basically um, you can select them, you can um, adjust them here. And if you click only on the pedestrian crossing you have here, both signal groups are selected but they are a little bit gray that means they have directional use um so this is new it's also new we um modified our um our behavior of our connection of lanes so we adjusted it um, or we made it similar to visim so if you add a new lane here another lane you can then 
you, you don't have any more to connect them via, via travel path. It's now just possible to select the end of a lane and then put it on a different lane. And then this is connected automatically. You see now here a um, connection point. Here, this will be also then in the map export and you can also delete this point and move the lane back. Uh, I delete it and then move the lane back out of the lane connection and now you have it again. So this is also, this could also be used then for the VISM export and also for the map export. Um, another cool new feature is we extended our moving behavior here of the um, Lisa intersection. We have now here moving of the whole network and now you can here um, scale or zoom your um, Lisa network, your lanes and so on. So you can make them a little bit smaller and a little bit bigger. The use case is um, you have a new site plan and you have to adjust the Lisa network to the new site plan, but you don't want to move any pedestrian crossings or uh, click on every lane connection and move them and so on, um, uh, move them. So it's just possible here to zoom, to scale it here. It's also possible to um, change the angle. So you just um, give in here a number and you can move the whole network um, by an angle. So this is also cool new feature here, being the extension of this moving behavior. So I uh, continue in, with the features in Lisa Go. I go now from the basic data module to the new model planning. Uh, to the I stay in the configuration module and go to the evaluation parameters. So what's new here in the model of the evaluation parameters? You see it here on this leg, for instance. Um, you have here the Heavy goods vehicle share, um, heavy goods vehicle share, uh, so uh, in the relation, or you can also have the absolute values. So this is heavy goods traffic, you can have it here as ratio or as total number. You can just switch it here to depict the heavy goods vehicle share. For instance, if you have, um, yeah, to, to make them later on for the level of service calculation, it's important point to depict how high is the heavy goods vehicles traffic and how in the heavy goods vehicles influence the um, other traffic, the other vehicles. So this can be depicted here. And another cool new feature here in the evaluation parameters are the depicting of the pedestrian and bicycle flows. You can enter here the number of pedestrians by cyclist um, if you have a pedestrian crossing and then they are depicted here on a leg and you can also add them here and you see that it's going to be <clears throat> adjusted automatically. So these are the new features in the configuration module itself in the evaluation parameters. I now continue to the planning tool. Here we added a um, new feature in the stages. In the stages, it's now possible to depict the ID numbers here on the right side, the ID numbers of the stages, the activation stage, and the sub intersection um, allocation here in the stage transition matrix. In Lisa 7, it was um, still hidden here below, uh, behind the icon, and now you can have it here to to see the ID number and the activation stage, and the allocation to the sub intersection numbers, because it's a really, really important issue to which uh, which ID number the stages have, and also which is the activation stage. I, we often have that in the helpline that you lost um, activation stage because you entered deleted a stage, and then you entered a new one, and then you have no activation stage anymore. And the, in the traffic actor aided plan in this uh, test site, it does not start. So to uh, avoid this confusion, we have now here uh, uh, this allocation of activation stage. You see also that we have here now new the undo and redo icons to make um, decisions, yeah, to, to undo here things. 
So I go now to the next module uh, in the planning tool. We go to the signal timing plans. Um, here in this module, we really worked a lot in this module and uh, we had a lot of um, yeah <laughs> problems, but now we solved most of, most of them. We, you can now depict a signal timing plan here um, and a permission plan on one page. That means if you have a signal timing plan and you also have a permission plan for the green wave um, allocations or you want to have in some certain time cycle times you don't want to have a move between the stage because the green wave arrives and so you use permission plans and because you often use this both um, information um, next to each other um, moving signal timing plans, stages, and the permission plans which you use in the logic, we now depict both um, below or next to each other. So it's not only possible to depict them next to each other, it's also possible to edit them. So you can uh, click here on extend and shortening the signal timing plan. So you can extend it here and you see the cycle time of the signal timing plan is extended as also the cycle time of the permission plan to 125. You can also shift here the signal timing plans and the permission plans. So now you can um, yeah, uh, link them and work together. It's also possible to uh, disconnect this, uh, alloc uh, this link. You just click here on the right side in the properties and disconnect the um, connect here the permission plan and then this permission plan has gone you can easily only adjust the signal timing plan the same is also for the permission plans here you have only the permission plan you can adjust it so the, the information or the separate module is not gone you can you can also now um, edit the permission plans separately not only uh, for signal timing plans, you can allocate to, to permission plans. It's now also possible to allocate um, permission plans to stage-based signal timing plans. So that's also a new feature. You have here the parameters, the permission plans. You can easily click here, I want a permission plan. And the permission plan is um, below the sig stage-based um, signal time plan. We often work here um, we often work with um, the stage-based um, signal timing plans and also often the stage-based STPs and the permission plans work um, together because you define here the ending of a stage and starting of a stage and not um, of um, the separate signal groups. You often do that with stage stages and stage transitions. So that's the reason why this was also an important step for us to implement it. So this is new. What's also new is um, you can add a comment to a signal timing plan here on the right side. You have um, add comment. Here you can add a comment on a signal time plan. You can say something like, oh, you have um, no only on demand or whatever. And then um, <clears throat> it's also possible to, to print it here as a PDF. It's also possible to move this comment to the permission plans here you use double comments and so on. Um, so this free um, this free text is, um, is movable as you want. So this is a new feature. What's also now new is for us that you have you don't have to use snipping tools anymore to make a copy of a signal timing plan. So you can easily click here with right click on a signal timing plan and open it in a separate view. So you see now here a window which opens. It's similar to the intersection sketch. You can move this window around. You can move it on separate um, monitor, uh, yeah, monitors here. And you can also uh, move this permission plan to different models. So I can now go to the, I don't know, to the test side and open the test side. And this uh, permission plan, this this window is still here with me and I can compare the signal timing plan and the permission plans, for instance. So I will close that. You can also open as many um, 
single time plans in separate views as you want. Yeah, so I can here add a lot of them and move them, depict them, whatever you want. So this is a new cool feature in Lisa. The single time plans, the allocation to the permission plans to edit both, to have this um, note, also to move here. We also modified the collection. Collections, you can here select now um, signal timing plans and permission plans and deactivation plans. So you can do the craziest um, collections, whatever you want here. And what's also new is in the permission plans, you can here now move the columns um, like you want um, here. And it, this is now transferred automatically to the permission plan. That's also a new cool feature in this module. I will now continue with, the signal, uh, with my presentation in Lisa 8. So I have um, I continued with the signal time plans. Now we go to the logic itself. We added a lot of small features, but um, you will you will love them. <laughs> Um, this was the reaction of many visitors in the uh, in of the inter traffic. So here on the right side, you have a new uh, module. It's called Log Logic Components. In this Logic Components module, you have the possibility now to mark um, certain uh, logic uh, modules or logic uh, types objects and move the logic um, objects here to this Logic Component um uh, point and now you see here this uh, logic component which i just selected and moved i was added here in my logic components i can now um, export this logic component list here or import it from colleagues so you can make your own logic component list here and uh, open as many intersection and use still use them and import them so importing them back is uh, also now easy via drag and drop. You can click here. You can now move this module. I will drag and drop here on this uh, point. So you see uh, connecting them are going via this uh, violet points. So you move it then this is here now. Added on this decision item. And these are now here. So it's possible to add many more. If variables are ne declared so far, you can, uh, Lisa asks you if you want to add the new variables. But um, this is just small gadgets. Um, what's also new here in the logic component? Um, so you can use this logic component um, model. It's also possible now to um, toggle um, decision elements. So you can toggle this uh, comment to this here. Now Lisa goes only this, um, chooses here in this option only this negative or no exit. So if you have this here, you uh, Lisa will not activate this logic anymore. We just go to the next um, point and will activate or decide here. Um, so before you ask, you can also have control left mouse. You can um, change here the exit. So now we have no exit to the uh, to the to the right and the yes exit to the bottom. So if I now toggle this here, you see that the logic will go this direction and the path here below is toggled completely. So this is a cool new feature. Um, Another new feature is if you want to delete or want to uh, switch this uh, decision element to a different to action element, you can just click here on change to action element and you see that you now ask what do you want to do now? If you want to delete the path to the right or the path to the below, then you can decide oh, I want to delete the path to the right and you see that everything was deleted here to the right. You can also um, make that uh, undo this thing. So you can now 
put a new uh, logic component here, but you can also use undo. You see everything is now <clears throat> made. Uh, everything is now undoed. That's um, a new cool thing. Another thing is that you have the elements here, all logic elements, uh, actions and so on. You have short keys for them, so you can use action. Uh, you can use for the action model control um, alt A. So if you click on control alt A, you see now that my cursor was changed and that I have now on my cursor um, an action model. But I can also make um, control alt D. Now I have the decision element and so on and so on. So you have now here um, short keys for this. I will now go to the test site itself. I can, I can go to the planning, go here to the test site. And what do we have? New things here. You have now here um, in the creating of the tests, the possibility to modify the test much more. So what do I mean with that? I mean, if you have um, here, for instance, a creating test, you're sending here PT telegrams, for instance, in this uh, cycle second 48. So if you um, change, for instance, the permission plan to one second, and now it was in all the leases, it was just, okay, now I have to move every cycle second here separately. Um, so here I would enter now 49, 79 and so on. And that's not, that's not, uh, that you don't have to do that anymore. So you just have to click here in the cycle second this, um, column this here, and now shift all seconds um, separately. You see also that Elisa keeps in mind there is um, maximum cycle duration. So this is a cycle time plan with a cycle dur a duration of 75 seconds. So you can now shift, you can see if I, exaggerate this uh, value, you see that now it's going to be zero and start here again, and I can also shift it back. So that's possible now for these um, lines. But you can also move now the lines, you can move the lines to the top and to the button, you can um, move them here and back. It's also possible to, to copy the clipboard or copy a line and enter the line here. So if you want to um, control C and control and paste, you can see that I um, copy here this column and you, I can add as much um, new lines as I want. That's new. What's also new is the decision of the elements. <clears throat> you can just click here on an element. You see now um, selective box. You can now just add here, make multiple choices for these um, detectors. You see that it ticked all multiple choices were added here on this test site creating of the tests. So this is special for the test routines. We have also a new um, creating of default test routine. So if you click on test routines and you click on this icon, you see that Lisa generates automatically three new um, test routines. That's basic test routines. Everybody use it. Um, for instance, the detector flow here. Um, everybody, that's the first test uh, routine everybody <laughs> adds. So we thought, okay, maybe we can um, add that automatically here. We have that for the test routines. We also have that for detector tips and we have that for detector on. We also have this generation of new automatic um, scenarios for the switching test. So if I click on switch test, I click here on creating test routines. But you see here, um, this is filled automatically based on the information you entered in the previous models. For instance, here, the signal time plans from one to four um, are marked automatically to have a modification of TA. The other signal time plans are fixed time. Or the duration of the 
signal time plans, the values are filled basi uh, basically. And here you see um, <clears throat> the test routines are um, both as you, uh, two test two switching tests are added, one with uh, going to, to the um, off state, and the other is without going to the off state. So it's also possible here. So this is not only for the switching test. We have also for random um, detector tests. You can add new tables with um, useful values based on the detector and uh, um, the type of allocated type you see here the types of video um, are having different time gaps than the push button time gaps is reasonable and also here different values in the, the um, in another detector test and last not but least we have also here default test for the public transport prioritization <clears throat> so here you have now you we have here a um, random public transport test, PT with login and um, check out all values are filled here also based on reasonable values which you can add or modify. And also this, we have both of them with different values to make, to test the extremes, extremes of your logic. That's so far to the creating of tests and um, editing uh, the test routines. And now um, it's also possible here to run fast till a defined um, simulation second. So I can add here the simulation second. I can now run fast of my logic and the logic will stop at the second. So you will see here now I make nothing logic so now it works you see it, the test side and the um, vehicles driving simulation and here on the button you see I'm now at simulation 150 60 and you will see that it stops right now in this second and now I can make detector tests or start a test routine whatever whatever yeah, so you can now skip to a certain simulation duration and then um, it stops and you can do now make testing. It's a, also a cool new thing. And now we came to the new part of how we go into the future, how we use Lisa in the future and how future readiness is Lisa. For that, I will reset my test site and I will now um, select you no know, um, vehicle flow and I will show you the new model here or the new application, a new window here in this model. You see here a new win window CITS cam. Um, in this model here, in this window, you have now uh, the possibility to depict um, all information of a cam of the cars which are simulated in the LISA test site. So you can set a simulation uh, penetration rate. You can say here cars are sending 100% CITS uh, information, also CAM messages. You can also set that for only for buses, whatever. So you can here modify your um, penetration rate and you can simulate it. I will show you what information you have here. So this is a permanent green logic so far or control. I will now add here a new uh, vehicle. This vehicle was um, now sim is now simulated here, uh, starting here at this roundabout. And you see here all information of this car. So this car drives on Leno. And Leno comes from the from the map information from this digital site plan uh, roadside unit or central has of this intersection so the car is driving on this lane no it has a destination lane to, to eight this is not to be honest it's not um, part of the information from the cam but we know it here in lisa and we can do with that some re research for instance but for um, traffic control and based on cam messages 
um, this information you, you don't want, you, you could not have. Then in the next column, you have the vehicle idea. It's like a license plate. You have the type of the car. So this is type five. That means it's a normal, um, a normal car. You can also add an uh, emergency car here. So you see that in the next uh, line, you have emergency car. So this is different type. You see also that this car has a, a siren. You have the length of the car, the width of the car is time step. And now the in also the interesting points, the interesting information came. The distance to the stop line so here. It's now 280 meters and the speed of the car. So this car has, drives now 14 meters per second. And with our new CITS functions, you can um, put these information into your control. So now I will change to the logic. And we edit here new controller functions. It's called the CITS CAM function group and also the CITS map function group. You can ask your map related um, information. For instance, how many lanes do I have? and are the lanes uh, which with signal groups to the connection from the lanes have. And you have also here a, um, a group of CITS cams that's, that could ask the information you see here on the test site. So now you can build your individual um, functions. For instance, here we created a function. It's called CITS signal group eta estimated time of arrival we iterate through all lanes we have on this um on uh, in our test site now then we search the relevant signal groups um after that we go through all l vehicles we have in the in the vehicle buffer on these uh, models here ts cam and we ask for the vehicle with the closest distance to the stop line. We ask here different um, information. We ask here, you see here the cam information, the new cam information. We ask here the minimum distance of the car. And important is now the speed of a relating car. So we add here the function cam station attribute. Then the vehicle idea we got from the loop here. And then we ask the speed. And here we have the distance of the car on the same procedure. We have the vehicle idea and also here the distance. And with this information on variables, we go to the to this calculation here. We ask first if we have some um, borders, border parameters, not to calculate uh, any crazy things. And we calculate here. We calculate here a, a simple uh, estimated time of arrival, distance through speed. And with this distance through speed, we depict it, for instance, here in our watched values. We have here a distance, uh, an estimated time of arrival for signal group V3. That's our 19 seconds. If I go one second further, we will have 18 seconds because the car is coming closer to the intersection. And what do we do now with these information? We now put them in a normal logic you see here. Um, you see here um, a fully fully actuated logic. You ask here if the stage is active, and here we have our CITS functions, and here we have our normal functions we use. If we have a tailback or we have a demand of a stage four, we start with the um, stage transition. And now we edit here we, a new function. It's called CITS signal group demand. We have a signal group, and we had here we we um, put here in uh, parameters, it's here 25 meters. That means if a car has a lower estimated time of arrival of 25 meters, then start the stage transition. And what you see now is here on the right side in the graphical log, you see here that I, that I were permanently in stage one and as I, in, uh, as I generated a new vehicle, uh, the logic <clears throat> started with a stage transition. The cars are coming closer and closer to the intersection. You see now I have a 
eta of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now the signal groups um, were also get green and the car uh, travels or uh, passes the intersection without a stop. Yeah, and that's one use case for this new CITS application or for our new CITS functions, but you can create your own use cases. You can generate emergency um, vehicle prioritization with separate stages. You can also generate prioritization of, uh, of buses or trams and so on. And cool is now that you can create a logic based on your own wishes and create them here in Lisa, create a logic for that. Important is test it here in the in Lisa and the test side. And now it's the cool thing is that you can um, export it to, to simulation to Visim and let the simulation um, run with these new functions. So it's also um, embedded in this uh, in our Lisa Visim setup in our interface and with the um, with controller actors. It is, we had also a research project. It's also working now on the, on the street. You can put a roadside unit there. You can put a logic in this uh, actress controller and then you can control the traffic with CITS application. So this is the new cool thing using the control logics, uh, using control logics based on CITS application. You don't have to remove or uh, yeah, remove your existing logic. You can just put on top your CITS application next to a uh, normal logic and do new fancy stuff. Lisa just gives you the tools to do that. I want also show you to a new debug feature. We have here the highlighted of the past symbols. You see here now how often a logic element was activated. With this number here on top, you see that the stage active uh, function here was um, activated 125 times, and this uh, uh, element here 92 times, and the stage transition was really activated by the CRTS function and not by this um, signal group demand. Yeah, you see this here, it was one time here gone through this. That's so far to a single intersection. I now go go to the coordination module, so connecting uh, the intersection, making a green wave. This is depicted here, coordination. So uh, here we um, have our new cool um, evaluation of the of the green waves of the platoons of the green wave so you don't um, make a level of service calculation for only green waves and say okay i could have here a, a green wave and um, the vehicles will be better we look here in lisa 8 but we also did that in 73 to be honest um, we look here on platoons and we follow the track of platoons through the um through the intersection through the network called this green wave and um, I know that's from <clears throat> still from uh, Lisa 7.3, we made some improvements with uh, cars going out and, and, and into the coordination. We also um, improved it slightly, but still to remember, I will just repeat here, uh, the Green Wave platoon uh, level of service calculation based on vehicle platoons. So for instance, on this intersection, I have three platoons going to the next intersection. The first platoon is, all cars um, were arrived at red and were be back and then at green beginning they started and have a really high density so these are the cars arriving at red the next platoon is the cars arriving at green but they are they drove off this uh, queue back of the first platoon and the next platoon is all cars um, arriving at green and uh, you see that the color is a little bit lighter, so that means you have we have here a lighter density of these cars. So you can now track these platoons through the whole coordination model. And 
cool thing is now that we also keep uh, keep into our calculation uh, the minor directions. For instance, here they are depicted in in uh, yellow, you know, orange, or I don't know, brown maybe. <laughs> um, so this <clears throat> minor direction starts here at this intersection. You can also say, okay, it's not a protective turn. That means a green beginning. This uh, car starts. It means uh, maybe you say it's permissive, so they start at green end. And you see this platoon, these cars are separate in two uh, platoons here at the next intersection. So these first platoon can drive through uh, green and yellow. And the next platoon uh, will wait on, on red. And also this platoon here uh, grouped with this platoon. And these two platoons start at green beginning right before the green wave or the, the platoon of the major green wave arrives. So we have enough time that we have no cubex. So this is really a um, good aspect of our platoon based um, level of service calculation. And we did some internal simulation in Wisim and um, calculation here. And our results are here close to Wisim up to a 5%. So if you configure here, um, uh, coordination really. Uh, exactly, you can have the same um, you, the same results calculated as uh, the simulation tool. So this is really impressive. And um, we put now in Lisa Eight the pop-up windows into um, a yeah, more acceptable way here in the messages. You see here the messages to the coordination. You have here the diagrams and search the the bottleneck of the intersection where you have. Um, Lost time, so on, where we have this bottleneck, you can modify it. And a new cool feature here is that we have the time switch coordination. So the best coordination would not work if the cycle times of the STPs um, do not fit. So this is here um, monitored. So you have here the di day plans for the time switch from Monday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And from Monday, you see here all intersections on this Y axis and on the X axis, you see the hours of a day. And you see that all on all intersection, you have the same cycle time, the same STP at the same time. So here, the coordination would work perfectly. You also see here uh, on Sunday, <clears throat> we have um, a trouble here on this intersection and this intersection. So here would, we would have a cycle time of 20, uh, 75 and here 60. So they would work asynchronous. You would not have a um, coordination here because only of the signal timing plans. This is depicted here on this calendar in red. And also you see that uh, on holidays, for instance, here on Easter, um, this time switch coordination works. So you see on this intersection 1211 and 1208 that the time switch of the normal Friday is depicted and the other intersection have recognized that it's a holiday and they um, <clears throat> have a Sunday um, time plan. And that's also cool that you that this, it keeps in mind the holiday. And if holidays are not um, supplied on the intersection depicted here. So that's basically the, the new features of Lisa 8. So the technical parts are we um, switched in Lisa 8 from uh, 32 bits to 64 bit system. That means um, we have um, much, it's, um, we increased the performance and we increased also the performance of Lisa server, or also the Lisa server. Um, <clears throat> Got the update to 64 um, bits. That means all, for all the admins that the server has to be updated, and you have a new uh, server license uh, uh, version, new server version. It's, it's four, server so version four, and it works much more faster than the old version. We also <clears throat> moved, um, we removed the Oracle um, development kit and use uh, the open JDK development kit in, Li in Lisa. So we are independent from this license troubles of Oracle. It's also new and we 
because of this move from 64 bit, we have to um, update old dongles because the old dongles um, are not able to, the, the old dongles are not able to um, open Lisa. So here we have uh, a new, we have an action. So we will inform you in, in time that we remove or we update your dongle and you got a new dongle version so you can open Lisa and with this new dongle you can also open Lisa 7. Also the projects are independently from Lisa version as always. You can work with uh, Lisa projects from Lisa 6 also imported to Lisa 8. From Lisa 8 to, pro to Lisa 7, in some cases if you add new uh, features like uh, the bike lanes, you would get uh, they will not depict in Lisa 7. But a project from the project perspective, it's independent um, which Lisa you use. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And as always, we are at your service if you have further questions. Please contact us at service at schlotower.de if you have any technical questions or if you want to quote and offer, have uh, any sales related questions, then please contact us at lisa at schlotower.de. Thanks and have a nice day.